open session. We have Dr. Guth and Superintendent Tracy Kern on conference call. Please stand and follow Mr. Burton in the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by a moment of silence. Ready to give. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Report on action taken in closed session. In closed session, the board took action to approve, deny the resolution number 201920-31, verification of the requirements for provisional internship permit by unanimous vote. Rejection of claim by the governing board of the Palo Verde Unified School District. This governing board having before it the claim of Melvin Walker, which was filed with the board on May 15, 2020, a copy of which is attached hereto and incorporated by this reference. It is hereby ordered that this claim is rejected in full. For, further, any portion of the claim which is untimely is rejected by operation of law. Passed by a vote of four ayes, one absent. Rejection of the claim by the Governing Board of the Palo Verde Unified School District. This Governing Board having before it the claim of Tony McBride, which was filed with the Board on May 15, 2020, a copy of which is attached hereto and incorporated by this reference. It is hereby ordered that this claim is rejected in full. Further, any portion of the claim which is untimely is rejected by operation of law. Passed by a vote of four ayes, one absent. All for an adoption of the agenda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Programs and presentations. Presentation recruitment incentives. Mr. Edward Singh. Okay, let's start all over. Good evening, board. So what I have in front of you is uh, it, it just some, some preparation that I did uh, prior to this meeting and contacting uh, neighboring districts in terms of what's available for staff for incentives. So as you look at Palm Springs, and this is a 1920 school year, they actually offered a $14,000 bonus to one, of, to one of our employees, and she actually went and signed with them. Current year, Palm Springs 2020, 2021, their incentive was a $10,000. They didn't have the need this year, but they do divide that incentive into two years, which is 5,000 and 5,000. Desert Sands Unified School District, $10,000, but they're on a teacher salary, so they get the 3% ongoing. Uh, Harupa, same thing, 2,500, they get the 3% 3, 3 they are actually on teacher sal salary as well. Is that me? Okay, and then San Diego, uh, and this is where this issue really comes into play. So we've posted, the uh, Palo Verde Unified School District has posted a position of a speech language pathologist for the last two years. We've, we've been able to get some bites, but when they look at our district, you know, the distance and just a variety of issues, they, they kind of walk away. We had a young man here a couple of weeks ago who just had every credential. He worked in a hospital setting. He had seven years of experience within an educational setting, lived in Imperial County, and was willing to come over here. Our, our pay is really competitive with almost anybody that's out there. The reason we lost him was because San Diego offered him a $10,000 signing bonus you know, to lure him you know, over to their direction. And the reason why I'm bringing this over to you, and the, the final one there is Laverne, and I was at a recruitment, and again, trying to get a counselor there, and they were offering 7,500. I didn't know much of the details there, but just looked at a 7,500 signing bonus. 
But, but going back to the young man that, that we just lost, uh, the $10,000 made, made a big difference for him. And, and what I'm asking tonight is not, not a decision. I'm asking you know, for you to give me direction in terms of if I can go and look and present you something going forward with some, some kind of incentive you know, that's, that's comparable to what's going on out there. And I'm not asking for 10000 or 14000 but we just need a mechanism to, to, to lure these quality people that are out there that are available that are willing. I mean, he, we talked probably three weeks. We negotiated, look at contract, look at pay salaries, you know, just back and forth, back and forth. And at the end of the day, the $10,000 made that much of a difference for him. Had we had something like a $5,000 incentive right now, as you look at Palo Verde, the only stipend that we have, the only signing bonus, we have a 1,500 uh, signing bonus for bilingual services. That's it. So, so we can't compete in that arena. And that's why I'm bringing it to your attention. If you want to give me direction to go forward, to pursue that, bring you something forward that might be enticing to a potential candidate. They do exist. They're out there. They do want to come here. But again, landing them is the difficult part. I mean, I've, I've had several that I've talked to. We've shared, you know, job descriptions. We shared, you know, our, uh, our salary. You know, I mean, we've shared everything. This young man was ready to sign, but again, he couldn't walk away from this $10,000. So I'd, I'd like direction from the board, you know, to either pursue or, or nothing. I mean, it just, I just think we need to be, we need to be a little bit more competitive in terms of that market. And then you're looking at what other districts surrounding us are doing to entice that same population to our district. And they're quality candidate. This young man was bilingual. Again, he had hospital experience. He had educational experience. He was a great candidate. We should have landed him. Does, does that incentive come with a guarantee that they're going to be at a certain district for a certain length of time? We can. It's the way we write it up. Some of those, and I talked to a few of the directors, some of them have a five-year. Some of them have, you know, $1,000 for every year. It just, you know, depends on what we want to put into our contract language. Okay? So if you want to give me that direction, I can do something like that as well. But I feel that to be competitive, and I'm, I'm just putting that number right in front of you so you can look, and you look at right at the top at Palo Verde, we really have nothing to offer, you know, to compete, you know, when we're out there recruiting, okay? And these are these are positions that you'd like to see there with the special education department. They're high in demand, correct? Absolutely. It's hard you know, to find the credential people that to fill these positions. Absolutely. School psychologists, speech pathologists, you know, that type right. of skill set, you know, that would require that incentive to get them here. And again, I don't need anything. I just want you to think, give me direction in terms of what you want me to pursue. Any other comments? Any? A whole lot of other things, those places, they got Walmarts. Uh, well, you know. I'm just saying. Exactly. I, I, know, I know what you're at saying. This time, at yeah. this time, I personally don't have no direction. I'm like, hey, yeah. we got to figure out right now. No, and I agree. I'm just bringing it to your attention. You. you may not want yeah. me to do anything with uh, it, okay? Yeah, I think it's something that we probably should have a little further discussion on and talk to Tracy about it. But, you know, as you've shown us, that's something that we're going to need to to have some discussion on and definitely, you know, make some decisions. Thank you, Edward. All right. Our hearing session. All right. This is an opportunity for community members to address the board on agenda and non-agenda items. All right. Tonight we have one public comment. It is from the U.S. Census. Good evening. I hope all is well. This is Juan P. Ramirez, Partnership Specialist with the U.S. Census Bureau. Thank you for allowing me to give some updates regarding the 2020 Census at tonight's school board meeting. As of today, Blythe's response rate is at 44.8%. That's an increase of only 1.5% from May 19th. The goal is to have 100% response so that Blythe can receive their fair share of the $675 billion in federal funds and grants. That money is spent on school lunch programs, Title I funds, special education grants, services for limited English language students, and other vital programs. I would like to inform you of our new efforts to continue raising the response rate for Blythe. I have begun conduct conducting self-response webinars for Blythe residents. In addition, I have attached a virtual questionnaire assistance webinar flyer for self-response. It is a virtual questionnaire assistance interactive flyer that can be posted on your district and school websites for anyone to access at their convenience to register for these webinars. 
The purpose of these webinars is to answer questions regarding the 2020 Census Questionnaire and to have 100% response rate in Blythe for this de decennial. I would also like to request that virtual digital engagement be included in your school's registration process by including a question asking the parents if they have answered their Census Questionnaire. If not, parents can have the following options. They wish to be contacted by a census representative via email, attend a virtual webinar, or reach out to me for more information. Lastly, next, next weekend, some cities will be participating in the 2020 Census Caravan Weekend, June 19th through the 21st. I hope Blythe residents can join us for these events and be the first ones to reach 100% self-response rate in Riverside County. Please continue to encourage everyone to respond online at 2020census.gov, by mail, or by phone at 1-800-1844-330-2020 in English or 1-844-468-2020 in Spanish. Please feel free to contact me anytime via email or mobile if you have any questions. Thank you and have a great evening. Juan P. Ramirez. Right. Reports and communications. Board member reports. Mr. Hernandez. Uh, just comments on the promotion and the congratulations. Cool. I think it was uh, very successful. It seemed like everybody participated and had a lot of fun. Uh, the only thing that was bad about it that you know you couldn't get together and shake hands and congratulate your classmates. But all in all, I think uh, we had a lot of compliments on the event, and I think it turned out pretty good. Mr. Burton? I want to kudos to all of the principals, the everybody that put together the, the promotion graduations. It was awesome, amazing. Love this community. Glad to be part of the team. Mrs. Gutierrez? Dr. Goof? And I would just like to second what everybody said about the graduations. It was three, three wonderful nights for the community. Right. Superintendent's report. Mrs. Kern. Ms. Yeah. Kern. Staff that made the graduation and promotion event successful, and for the families uh, in in their support and involvement, and congratulations to our class uh, 2020 graduates. Um, I also want to bring to the board's attention. Uh, CSBA registration is uh, starting uh, as of today. Uh, early registration opens June 9th. It's going to. It's in Anaheim this year, December 3rd through 5th. Uh, it's going to be offered both in person or virtual. And uh, Janine will be reaching out to you um, if you are interested in participating. All right. Thank you. Mr. Sanchez with our fiscal update report. Good evening, board, superintendent, community. Um, I also quickly just want to echo um, my appreciation for everyone's efforts to help put graduation together. FMOT uh, in particular, they, the, the maintenance, custodian, grounds teams out there sweating uh, and did great work. Uh, congratulations to the 2020 grads and uh, everybody whose uh, efforts help put on a beautiful three ceremonies. Um, the budget update. Um, for uh, the month, we are currently working on the 2021 adopted budget. We're in the final stages of that budget development. Um, we probably going to wrap the building of the budget up this week, and then I go into what are called SACS forms, where we're just loading all of the information into, um, you know, standardized kinds of documents. So. Um, that's moving along. Um, since the last board meeting, we've identified about a half a million dollars that we're going to set aside for tech. Um, we need to upgrade the, the teacher computers, um, Chromebooks, uh, technology, or excuse me, the internet infrastructure. There's this you know, new, I guess, phase that we're about to enter with the you know, hybrid learning approach, more reliance on tech, um, has helped us identify some needs. Uh, so we're, we, uh, that's kind of the biggest, I think, development since the last time I came in and spoke with you guys. Uh, the federal government, uh, I think, as I stated before, um, has sent some funds to help support these efforts. And so the bulk of, actually, that's entirely where the money's coming from for that $500,000. So we appreciate the federal gov government for their support. Um, we're continuing to evaluate positions as we build a budget, um, uh, looking at 
you know, are we making the best strategic use of things? Um, maybe looking at, at the management level in particular, um, are there positions that we can, you know, kind of blend together? You know, just trying to be as, as efficient as possible um, as we, we build the budget. Um, I am also pleased to report that we had the rating call for the bond uh, last week, and um, our rating, it's essentially like our credit rating, it held at A1, so I'm very proud of that. Um, we were a little nervous there given you know, the environment that we were in uh, as to whether we would receive a downgrade, but um, we did not, and so I, I want to thank uh, Tracy for her support on that as well. Um, we have, we're not quite to a tentative agreement with CSEA on the, the, the COVID stipends, but I do think we've gotten to a place where we have a whole lot of common ground, and it is my expectation that at the next board meeting I will send um, you guys an MOU draft um, that supports uh, the CSEA team uh, for the work that they've done over the past three months. Uh, I'm sending the AB 1200 to RCOE most likely first thing in the morning. They typically want 10 days to review and make sure um, that we can afford it. Uh, this particular deal isn't anything crazy, so I don't expect anything uh, negative coming back from RCOE, but um, nevertheless, that's where we're at. And we also received Scale's budget um, just, I believe, this morning, and so I'll be bringing that to you guys to the next board meeting as well. Any questions regarding budget? Thank you. Thank you. We have no reports of associations this evening. Consent items. Items listed under the consent calendar motions are considered to be routine and are acted on by the governing board in one motion. There is no discussion of these items prior to the board vote unless a member of the board requests specific items be discussed and or removed from the consent agenda. It is understood that administration recommends approval of all consent items. Each item on the consent agenda approved by the governing board shall be deemed to have been considered in full and adopted as recommended. Ms. Gutierrez will read the consent items. L1 minute. L2 personal report 2019-20-18. L3 ratification PBHS associated student bodies statements for February, March, April 2020. L4 ratification of purchase order listing for May 2020. L5 approval of continued membership to is CIF San Diego section and designation of 2020-2021 CIF League Res Representative. I can't even talk right now. L6 Sunshine Proposal Teamsters 1 support, support group. Initial proposal to PVUSD. L7, Sunshine Proposal, CSEA and its chapters 111, initial proposal to PVUSD. L8, ratification of regular school business. Call for a motion. Okay. We have a motion by Dr. Guth and a second by Mr. Hernandez. All in favor? Any opposed? Action items. M1, approval of resolution number 201920-30, order of election 2020. Call for a motion. So moved. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? M2, approval of 2019-2020 Palo Verde Head Start second budget revision. Motion? Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? M3, approval of ter to terminate lease agreement between the Palo Verde Unified School District and the County of Riverside for 295 North 1st Street, Blythe, California known as 201 North 1st Street, Blythe, California, in lease agreement. Call for a motion. Questions or comments? The building and spending several million dollars, I believe, uh, in uh, moving into a new facility, correct? That is correct, correct? Tracy, I can't hear. Yeah. Uh, what degree of assurance do we have that that will be backfilled 
by the uh, by the state. The the cost of the cost of the new construction that is. To what degree of insurance is it? A hundred percent or is it seventy percent? With the uh, downturn in the in the um, economy, I'm not sure that um, that all of the funds are going to be there. Um, I can't say with any degree of certainty that the funding will be backfilled with modernization funds. I believe the intent is um, predominantly to use bond proceeds to to help complete that um, that project. And and the the benefit to the district for using the bond proceeds is as it, it doesn't impact the general fund at all. What we're trying to do is relieve pressure and take. Um, you know any fiscal impact away from the general fund and and that's ultimately what this action is is about Okay So we aren't assured that the money will be backfilled other than by the uh, bond money Yeah, that's correct we're we're looking into um, possible matching funds, but there's we it's not in a position of where we could say uh, that there's assurance on that. We are looking uh, towards the bond for uh, solutions for the district office. Okay, I'm just nervous about uh, about that. Uh, it's quite a quite a chunk of money, but okay. Any other questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any okay. opposed? Aye. M4, approval of 2021 and ratification of 19-20 CSM contract for E-rate compliance services. Call for a motion. So moved. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? M5, first reading and final approval, updated job description and new position, coordinator of student services. Hold for a motion. Aye. Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? M6, permission to adjust intra-district transfer open enrollment window for the 2020-2021 school year. All for a motion. Aye. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? M7, approval for deletion, board policy 4033, veterans preference for employment. All for a motion. Got a second? Okay. Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Oh, okay, go ahead. Uh, the problem I have with this policy was back when Dr. Guth was uh, superintendent and Mr. Marlowe was uh, the president. In fact, that's him at the bottom row, right in the middle. Uh, was a, I was a veteran at that time, and the, the, there was no policy for uh, giving veterans a preference when they came in. And what I mean by preference was not that you come in and you automatically get the job. The preferences was if there was two equal candidates, that the preference would go to the to the veteran. And when I looked up the the board policy that that we're saying replaces it, it doesn't replace it. it that, that has to do with discrimination, and and there is no, nothing there that has to do with veterans' preferences. That's why this policy was made back in in the, in the 90s because there was no preference for us veterans. And, and uh, because the federal government does have a policy where veterans do have first preference, but that's federal funding. But we do get federal funding, and, and it's somewhere we should put that policy in. And I'm not saying that the veteran should automatically get the job if he doesn't qualify. I'm saying that if it's a close race, that the veteran should have the preference. Veteran spent time out of his life 
and come back at an older age where other ones have, have not been, didn't go, so I had an advantage over us coming back home. But I don't, I don't like replacing it because there's nothing in place of this policy now. Do you have any comments on it, Janine? Since it's in the board uh, agenda, says content from the policy is now referenced in board policy 4030, non-discrimination in employment. That should cover it. It doesn't, co it doesn't cover veterans' preference. It's, it's no longer supported through CSBA or through GAMETs is the problem and, and in fact they have it one of the reasons I had put this on the agenda for deletion is they have another policy which references students that they're putting this number to that is supported by CSBA and the content well it doesn't specifically state veterans the the uh, content in that policy is if you read through the entire non-discrimination it is referenced in that policy. I didn't see it. Well, it doesn't say specifically, and if you look at the footnotes, it does say it in there. It's in place back when this policy was made, and that's why the president at that time was a veteran. You know, he, he flew jets during the Vietnam and World War II, but it, it, there is still no preference, and I, I don't think it's fair to take it away because you know, here we come back again to a veteran. What we were promised is being taken away again. I mean, I am, I am, I mean, I, I, I have been involved with projects where I was denied because I was a veteran. And, and I think this thing should still stay in place somewhere in our board policy. We cannot help it if we served and come back and, and, and we're not appreciated. But this policy does have, give us a little bit of leeway when looking for a job. Mr. Sanders. Yeah, I, I, encourage you to, I encourage you to fact check me. Um, maybe we, we run it by bill, but my understanding is that it's, there's something in California law that, is, that prevents us from giving preference. And, and it's, it's a weird thing where I think we're allowed to give preference to Vietnam veteran errands or Vietnam era vets, but that's it. No, you know, no Gulf, Gulf War, Desert Storm, none of them. I, it's, I would encourage you guys to fact check, but that's what I think it is, is that there's something written in a later you know, California you know, law that doesn't well, allow well, that. Whether it's written or not, we were still promised as a veterans in the service. I remember I mean, come on now. It, it, this is something that was supposed to be given to us. I, I, I'm against taking something again away from a veteran. And it may have been promised to Vietnam vets, which is no, why. It was okay. Prom it's promised. It was promised to my nephew. Okay. Who just got into the army. I mean, I just, I just don't think it's right because a lot of people do oppose the military, and I think this is why this is being taken out. There's already been a motion and a second, so we have to take a vote. We can vote to choose not to delete it at this time, um, but it's like it, we need to continue to do some research. As Mr. Sanchez said, um, usually these end up on here because we've been directed by the state to remove them. So um, we, can, we can vote how you choose to, everybody chooses to vote, and then um, bring it up later. We, could, we would have been able to table it, but we already have a motion and a second. So call for a vote. All in favor? He said I have All right. Any opposed? I'm leaving. I'm leaving too. Okay. All right. Discussion and information items. Discussion of the 2020 2021 school reopening. Crazy. Yeah. Um, so, for reopening of schools, uh, since the guidance documents have been released recently, uh, the Center for Disease Control re released their document last week. Uh, they worked in tandem with California Department of Public Health. Uh, California Department of Ed Education released their document uh, this week. 
and Riverside County Office of Ed with County Public Health um, feedback and involvement will be released as of Monday, June 15th. Um, so we are forming a PBUSD task force um, using this guidance so that we can come up with a model and a plan for safely reopening schools. Um, we're really needing a board kind of direction on moving forward with the uh, target date that has already been uh, adopted based on the district um, adopted calendar of August 10th as the set date uh, to reopen schools safely using a triad model approach, uh, giving choices for our family uh, of face-to-face, -face, uh, a blended or long distance choices, um, but wanting and needing some board direction as we're moving forward with um, looking for the August 10th start date for students, uh, the August 6th start date for teachers, and we need to begin to have that as a guidance for our task force and begin to communicate to our community of, of these intentions. Tracy? Um, I, this is my, I personally feel like we need to try to stick to that August 10th the deadline. I don't know where the rest of the board is or the opening date. Um, just for the fact that in these uncertain times, um, I think some continuity would be great for our students and our families. Um, as long as we're able to, to meet the students' needs by that time, um, then, then I personally would encourage that we do that. Any other comments? Okay, the next one we have, Tracy, is discussion to set a date for the 2020-2021 Superintendent Goals Workshop. Yeah, so I'd love to um, uh, set the date um, to set the goals for um, the superintendent and uh, recommending to the board and opening up for discussion a uh, possibility to have um, the goal set setting workshop for July 28th from 4.30 to 5.30 uh, p.m., an hour before uh, the regular session, um, the board meeting in July, just kind of wanting to open it up for discussion on um, what the board direction would be for that. I'm fine with that. Is everybody okay with that? Uh, yeah, at this point, that seems to be Dr. Goose. Okay. So at this point, Tracy, it seems like that works for everybody. Thank you. N3, first reading and discussion, board policies bylaw recommended for update December 2019, CSBA policy guide sheet. All right. Other business? Okay. Any future agenda items? Okay. Call this meeting adjourned. Next regular meeting, Tuesday, June 30th, 5.30 p.m. Close.